Hello, this is kind of an interesting CLI Magic presentation. Now, I want you to understand I'm not endorsing any candidate by posting this. And the only reason I am posting it is so that you can see how using the command line you can see some interesting details of real life. So on October 15th, this website was released to the public and it be quickly became a viral website. It's called RomneyTaxPlan.com. You go to it and it says if you want to get the details of this tax plan, click here. And then, haha, -ha, the button moves around. And this website, if you look down at the bottom, was paid for by the Democratic National Committee. I understand that a lot of people who follow CLI Magic are from outside the United States. So this is only going to be an interesting tidbit. Um, you know, you might be interested in it. Anyways, uh, it turns out that the domain itself, something I often do when I find an interesting domain, is I'll do a who is lookup on it. Now who is is a command that has been in Unix since, I don't know, since probably the 80s, since the beginning of DNS and domain names. It allows you to look against the global who is database and then from that look at the uh, the databases of the registrars that actually register the domains like GoDaddy, Omnis, Network Solutions, and so on. And all the country registrars as well for all the country domains. So using this you can actually look up a domain and see who who runs the domain. Um, in modern times there's a lot of proxying that gets done so sometimes you just see kind of an anonymous uh, entry for it. If you don't have who is, you can install it uh, on Zubuntu and Debian and Ubuntu. It's J who is. Uh, you can also go online and uh, you can also go to, you know, there's who is websites and stuff where you can look up this information as well. But if you're using Linux, then the easiest way is to use it from the command line and also the safest way. So, I look up this domain and some you know it first it starts out by saying you know it goes to the global who is database and then that refers it to GoDaddy now the interesting thing is that this domain even though they released the the website on the 15th it was actually created on October 18th 2011. Today is actually October 18th, 2012. So it's a year since the domain was created and they recently renewed it. That's what this last update on shows. And why I wanted to show in this is that not only did they register it a year ago, but they also didn't register any other candidates domain taxplan.com. So here you'll see I'm going to run a for loop where I say for candidate in and then I give the names of all the other GOP Republican candidates uh, both just their last name and then also their full name just in case they decide to do that. Um, so I, I give the list of items and then I say do echo the candidate so you can see what the candidate's name is as it goes by and then a J who is uh, which is the program that I just installed followed by the candidate name and I put it in curly braces here so I can specify that this string right here refers to the variable that I want to call so over here I'm not actually including extra text after the variable name so I don't have to demarcate it like this but here since I'm putting taxplan.com afterwards I want to put curly braces around the actual ca word candidate so that it can distinguish that this part is what the variable name is and the rest of it is just you know a, a string um, and then I grep for created on and so I run this and you can see that Romney was, you know, the only one that actually was created, at least that I can tell right now, is uh, was the RomneyTaxPlan.com. 
So that's kind of interesting. There could be other explanations for this. It is possible to delete domains after you create them. Uh, it does take about 90 days for the deletion to go through and for the the global Whois database to have it removed. But then again, why why would they delete it and create this weird kind of you know almost looks like a conspiracy type of thing going on? Um, because the actual primary elections in the United States. Uh, for the GOP didn't the whole process didn't start until January of 2012 so all the you know several of the candidates were still actually active and when they registered RomneyTaxPlan.com obviously they were thinking ahead why not just buy the rest of the domains for all the other candidates because at that point supposedly it was still up in the air as to who would have won so you can read into this however much you want. I know it sounds like a conspiracy theory, but it's an interesting thing that was revealed through using command line commands. And I thought I'd share this with you. Um, and uh, <laughs> if anything, just share the evidence on the internet that it actually, this was the case. You know, um, they could have possibly deleted the domains after they saw the other candidates drop out. Um, and domains, you know, you can register them for only like 10 bucks or 5 bucks a, a year now. So there would be no reason not to get all the candidates, uh, really. You know, you don't want to be talking about like maybe 50 to to $100 or $150 to register them. And why not just keep them around just to show that at least, you know, there's no kind of weird conspiracy going on. Okay, well, this is kind of a strange CLI magic video, but uh, I thought I might as well share it. Why not? Okay, see you next time.